we, we have a constitution or preamble that says, you know, all men or all people are created equal. When it comes time to consider, you know, where we're PCSing to next, it's not just a, you know, send us wherever you want. We have to have a conversation. Is it safe for us to go there? What I'm going to speak on today is from my heart and it's my journey. Like how, how would we make it better? I think more diversity, more inclusions, more being able to have these type of conversations to be open and honest without repercussions. My sons are five and three, so it's really hard. My husband and I have had conversations amongst ourselves about how much we want to expose them to. You know, what do we want to talk about with them? Um, you know, what we decided is that the most that we can do right now is build their confidence and let them know that they matter, that they're valued at home and in the world. My husband is an avid runner and, um, not that I felt that he was in danger in our community, in this neighborhood, but I just had, I remember having a knot in my throat every time he would go out for a run. So much so that I took up running myself and I don't like running, <laughs> but it was the only way I felt like I had control. Um, I could be right there behind him, making sure that he was okay. Trying to take all these precautions that we shouldn't have to, but we do, um, knowing that in certain situations, if we do get pulled over, it's always, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, always having all of our documents in a quick to find location. Uh, <laughs> just try not to be out too late. As I was leaving the 82nd Airborne Division, had a, uh, a, a, a white officer peer that was a friend of mine I was PCSing to or uh, moving to Northern Virginia and he said he had a friend that uh, could help me find uh, um, find a realtor and I, I called uh, I called um, uh, the, the the individual of my that my friend gave me and told him who I was and how I got his number and as I started to talk to him about uh, the neighborhoods, you know, he started to steer me away from him because he assumed that I was white. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, um, you know, this is in 1998 and, and it was, uh, you know, it was a clear indication of, um, of an agenda of, 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 of it. And, you know, I listened to him and I never called him back, but, you know, I'm just, it was very, it, it was, um, very hardening. I just was like, I, you know, I can't believe we're still having to deal with this. I was fortunate enough to command an army installation, you know, so I was essentially the mayor of this installation. And after I've been there a couple of weeks, um, uh, some people came to me and said, you know, the discussion about you coming in was, uh, you know, there's a black colonel coming to command the installation. And so throughout my career, I found that uh, when I've gone to a new assignment, when I was in the military, people tended to refer to your race first rather than your rank. I'm actually proud of the, the measures that the Army has done to uh, ramp up. Um, they, uh, the senior leaders like as soon as all this happened, the senior leaders in the Army uh, start looking at things that we, uh, programs or initiatives that we have in the Army to that, that may cause some type of institutional biases or discrimination. Literally after the George Floyd incident, uh, our company, we did, we came together to talk about all these separate incidences and how do you feel? Do you feel like, um, 
you're seeing some of the racial discrimination that's happening in the company or within the unit. Mm -hmm. And I've always said, no, not within this unit, because this is my, even though this is my first duty station, this is my first time seeing color, (laughs) seeing color in command. Like we have a female Hispanic first sergeant African-American company commander, and even our command sergeant major is an African-American. This is a lot of color. And even for the body of us, we all are different races. It's not majority white, but it's enough that it's a mixed diversity. And so I do, I feel like we, we don't have those issues that other issues or other units may have. From my perspective, it has to be a constant drumbeat. It doesn't, it, it needs to be more than just uh, these last couple of months. It needs to be a constant yeah. drumbeat where we're always sitting and talking and listening to someone else's perspective. It's been great to see that people are willing to have the conversations. Uh, what I hope is that it's not a one-time conversation and that it's not just a conversation. I hope that it's a conversation that leads to growth and it motivates people to educate themselves.